podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Coming up, Apple's new subscription model will kill publishers, or will it? We'll talk pros and cons. Plus, a good use for a 360 handstrap iPad case, all that, and super Soviet missiles on iPad Today. This episode of iPad Today is brought to you by Slingbox, which can turn your iPad into a television. With the new iPad app from Slingbox, you can watch your home TV on your iPad anywhere you go. Check it out at slingbox.com. Oh, hi, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of iPad Today. I'm Sarah Lane, and Leo Laporte is still on vacation, but that's okay. I've got good news. My buddy Scott Johnson has been gracious enough to agree to co-host with me. He doesn't know what he's in for, but... It's too late now because he's here. Hi, Scott. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> it's a pleasure for me to be here. I know uh, Leo's been gone for a while, and everyone is really going to wish he was back today after this show's over. But I'm thrilled that you had me uh, do a little stand-in for him. I'm excited to be here. I am excited, too. I obviously know you from a variety. of. I, I met you through Tom, I guess, specifically. But you also, mm. you, you, you work with Twit on a regular basis. Uh, for anybody who's not familiar with your work, who are you and why are you here? Well, the short story is um, I, I, you could call me a web cartoonist. You could call me a podcaster. Just don't call me lazy. Um, I do a whole bunch of stuff. But for people who aren't familiar with my work in podcasting specifically, since we're on this show, go to frogpants.com and it's all there. Everything from my morning show to all the other shows I do. And I do an iOS show called App Slappy with Eileen Rivera, who works there at Twit. Yes, uh, she sure does. Married, married to Tom, I guess we could say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she's she's brilliant on that show. So there's a little bit of Twit over here as well. But um, I, I guess the biggest thing I do on Twit is forecast with Tom on Mondays. So some of the listeners here are probably familiar uh, with that show. Absolutely. And we've had you on there, which is, you know, a yeah. bit of a turnaround here. It's been a while. It's what forecast anybody who doesn't know forecast it's it's kind of a prediction show. I mean, pr predictions for the next year, but then some sort of far out predictions. And you kind of, unless you've really changed your mind, it's hard to be on forecast regularly. So I know you guys have the unique <laughs> issue of being like, okay, who in the world have we not had a forecast? Because we've run through <laughs> had, all of our friends. We had our wives on the other day. That yeah. was crazy. So uh, uh, we did a little Valentine's edition. That, that was really interesting. That's, yeah, interesting. That's a good choice of words. That's safe. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't Very great. Safe. Wasn't terrible. It was just interesting. A lot of interest. Uh, well, of course, this is iPad Today, the show all about iPads. And Scott Johnson, as he mentioned, he he does a show about uh, iOS. So, of course, the iPad is included. So he knows all about this stuff. It's a great fit. And um, I, I don't know why I didn't think of it before, quite frankly. But, um, but it's nice to have you here. And what we're going to start off with is... A little bit different. I'm not going to change the format of the show that much. But usually, as anyone who watches the show regularly knows, we start off with a theme. We try to put together a few apps that might be similar, but at least fall under a general theme. Talk about what we like about them and maybe why you might prefer one over the other. But this week, there's so much talk about Apple and the whole Apple versus the publishers because of their new subscription model that publishers have until June 30th to comply with, which, um, well, in, in the, uh, it, should I <clears throat> put on my Steve Jobs hat? Yeah, could you? Because, I okay. mean, this has been all I've heard for the last two, three weeks. And I swear, this isn't, I don't think there's been a bigger story dealing with iOS or the iPhone or iPads, probably since Antenna Gate, maybe. No, um, I agree with you. This has really stirred up the poop, I've noticed, in the well, last couple of weeks. So I'm excited to talk about that, too. Me, me too. So this is this is um, my interpretive reading of, of what Apple has told the publishers. <clears throat> Our philosophy is simple. When Apple brings a new subscriber to the app, Apple earns 30% share. When the publisher brings in an existing or, or, or new subscriber to the app, the publisher keeps 100% and Apple earns nothing. This is Steve Jobs. This is direct quote. All we require is that if a publisher is making a subscription offer outside of the app, the same or better offer be made inside the app so that customers can easily subscribe with one click right in the app. Okay, so you read that and you say, well, that seems fair. They're giving customers a choice. They're not forcing publishers to do anything. They just want the customers to be able to 
subscribe in app or go to the publisher's website or wherever else they can subscribe if they so desire. The problem with this is that, and as you and I know, I mean, if you are used to working within the app store environment and when you're within an app, especially because the iPad is, you can say it has multitasking, but it's not really multitasking in the way that you can you sort of jump in and out easily. If you have a one click subscription button within an app, I, that's what I'm going to use. No, it seems like, uh, again, it seems like a nod directly to the user and it says to us, hey, here's an easy, okay, well, let's use a real world, world example. Let's take the most obvious app, I think, in most people's minds that they already have a subscription to as a service and the app is acting as a sort of an extension to that service. And that would be something like Netflix. Right. The idea of being able to go into a Netflix app as a discovering user, someone who doesn't currently have Netflix streaming as a as a service they're using either on TVs, Roku's, computers, or whatever, they see that and they go, oh, well, I can easily subscribe by clicking here. It asks for my password, the Apple password, and bam, I now have a subscription. I'm off and running and I'm streaming stuff. Exactly. That is great for me as a user, but I could see how for somebody like Netflix, and not talking about them specifically, but anybody in that side of it is saying, well, wait, we don't want to give you that ability. We want to retain that ability because we're letting people uh, discover and subscribe through lots of different ways. And we don't want to have them, uh, you know, we don't, we, we want to be able to control that experience, be able to follow the metadata, understand who's coming, who's going, who's subscribing, who's not. And they're not getting all of that from Apple. At least that's the claim. Exactly. And it, it's, this is also, a lot of this is just potential issues for publishers, because again, they've got a few months to work it out. And if there's enough hullabaloo, I have to assume that Apple will say, oh, okay, Netflix, all right, all right, all right. We've got Netflix on our Apple TV. We need to remain, uh, you know, good, happy partners with each other. Tom made this point yesterday where he's like, they're not going to take 30% of Netflix. That's just not going to work because Netflix has power over Apple because that's that was a big addition to the latest uh, version of Apple TV. I know that that's the way that uh, I... I watch my Netflix movies, so I, I I tend to agree with that. But again, a lot of this is just, how is it all going to play out? Because on paper, it's really upsetting a lot of people. But is it really that big a deal to publishers? Because then there's the whole discovery option and the ease of use within the iPad. And if the customers are happy and the publishers, you know, another thing too is the, the whole idea is the publishers, when you subscribe direct subscription model, you know, publisher and, and consumer, you, they get all sorts of information about you. And if you are uh, subscribing through Apple and Apple gives you a way to very easily circumvent that, Apple will say explicitly, there's a little pop-up, do you want to share your information with a publisher? You can just say no and that's the end of that. Um, publishers are all up in arms because now they don't know how to market to us. But what do they really get? I mean, in this day and age, it's like, what will they know about me? My name, my city I live in, and my name or my age? Well, maybe they see this is the gets to the crux of the issue, in my opinion, which is I don't think the customer or the these publishers. The, I, let me put it this way. I think their chief problem and their chief concern is that they don't control it mm -hmm. like that little piece of it. This little handshake part is not under their control anymore. And it used to be. Right. Um, and, and that scares them because this these are, you know, their customers technically, and now they're having to basically have a, a whole new layer of interface between them and their customers, and they don't like that. They like the way it was where they could sort of, you know, be the the one-stop shop to get to the, to the customers, get whatever data they want to get from them, and not have to rely on what little data uh, gets passed through Apple or Apple's inability to share that data, whatever data they do hit, get, because Apple's in under, you know, they're under no obligation to share any more data than they agree to. Right. Um, and so they just feel kind of locked in like, well, well, how come, you know, I, this, these are our customers. We should have more control over this. Yet we don't have, you know, Apple's the one with the platform we're trying so hard to get people on. It's a it's a it's a twisted mix, really. It is. I can really see. I mean, some folks are downright saying app, this is an evil move by Apple. And I can see that I can see that side of things. I also think that if you're siding on, if you're siding with the publishers, you're really siding with something that it's 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 the unknown that's scaring everybody because this isn't even in place yet. It is for a few uh, apps though. And in fact, this is a good um, time for us to get into sort of our theme, which is 
apps that may or may not be adversely or 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 positively affected by the new subscription model. And a couple of uh, examples I have. One you've heard me talk about before on the show is Wired. Wired uh, was one of the very first, if not the first, definitely one of one of the first um, publishers to get on the Apple bat bandwagon and and provide apps that were specifically iPad capable. So you know all this good stuff that ooh we almost we got a little side boob there. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's PG. It's PG. Sweet. It's all my good. visit here is right. complete. I've yeah, seen all I need see, to see. I, this is it, this is my gift to you, Scott. Happy Thursday. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, if anybody is familiar with Wired, the 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 iPad version of Wired is great. What's oh, not awesome. great is that you have to remember that there's going to be a new issue and relaunch. And when you launch the app, it'll it'll let you know that there's a new issue uh, that's released, and that's all fine and good. But you have to pay for it separately, and there's just not like a behind the scenes machine going on. So it's there's just a little bit more work than most people are used to, unless you're actually buying a Wired off of a newsstand once a month. And I, it, that's that's fine, but that's not the publishing model. So this is Wired. Now, if I was to uh, launch Wired and it say a new episode or a new episode, new <laughs> new issue, uh, I, I've been podcasting too long. New issue? Are you in, are you interested? I'd say yeah, sure. Also, the back issues stay there as long as yeah. as long as you want the Wired back issues. They don't go anywhere until you know you run out of space. So that's great. I would like this about Wired. Now, I understand that Condé Nast might get uh, its feathers ruffled by my convenience being that they have to share 30% of their take with Apple. Totally get that. But from a consumer point of view, this is what I've always wanted. Now, Well, that's the problem, right? That's, again, here is a feature that we want as users that directly... <laughs> Wired wants that for us too. I don't think there's any question about that. They want that convenience and that and that ability to just go boom, bam, pay for it out, not have to get out and do crazy things. Mm -hmm. They want us to be able to do that, but they don't control any of it, and they lose a t you know a piece of the pie here. And there, you know, that works on an app level, I think, because when on, with apps, you're dealing with a, a an infrastructure system that app developers don't have. Right. At their fingertips, not everyone is EA or Chilingo or whatever, so they kind of need this uh, this thing, mm -hmm. and they're willing to to sacrifice that. But guys over at Wired, I don't know. I mean, they're they're. I, well, if, I, I, if, if you ask me, it's the, it's that thirty percent take of in app purchases that's probably going to you know kick up the most dirt. And what will they do? It's like, so what are your options? So they 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 yank their iPad app that everybody loves. And the only thing that everybody didn't really, I mean, I'm t of course, talking about Wired fans, any Wired fan didn't love really was that there was no subscription model that really made sense and worked behind the scenes. What it, you know. No, and, well, I mean, that's the issue is that they, because they don't control the platform and mm -hmm. somebody else does. Right. They, their, their choices all suck for them because right. they lose no matter what. And they don't like to be forced to lose Right <laughs> in that in that way. Now, what's what's interesting is when that app came out, and I love the Wired app. I think it's awesome. Um, I just happened as I was about to buy my first issue in there. I just happened to notice Amazon had Wired magazine, like the traditional good old fashioned printed magazine, available for twelve bucks for a year. And <laughs> I thought, well, I, why am I doing this? I'll just go ahead and get that. That'll actually cost me less by far than it would to buy every issue on the iPad, despite the convenience and the fact that I love my iPad and everything else. So there's al there's also that weird side of this where subscriptions are dropping like crazy to try to drive people to buy, you know, printed stuff. And that th that makes it even more complicated for the likes of Wired and, and Apple, for that matter. Very true. Another magazine uh, publisher, rather, that already has jumped on this app, Apple bandwagon and been like, OK, Apple, we'll work with you. Let's give it a shot. Uh, are the folks at Nylon who have even gone on record as saying, yeah. So we don't get some consumer information, you know, that we, 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 we make them happier. And so we're happy. So this is a uh, nylon is just one of um, a few apps that, that have been part of this kind of publisher launch, popular science being another, and of course the daily, uh, which we've covered uh, at length. So we don't have to talk about the daily today, but I'll go ahead and launch nylon. So you get an idea of what your options are. Okay. So this is um, just kind of loading up here. We're, in the studio and it's always really, really slow in the studio. I don't know why. So here we've got this nice subscribe to Nylon Magazine, $9.99 for a year. Ooh, neat. Okay, so that's a one button push. That's great. I love it. This makes a lot of sense to me. Now, if I say, okay, well, let's just see 
if I can make the same type of move from at nylonmag.com, which is again, that would be their preferred way that I do that so that Apple doesn't get a cut. So if I just go ahead and click that link, now I'm being sent over to nylonmag.com. Okay, all right, it's loading, it's loading. Anyway, I've, I've already done this once today, so I already know what I'm gonna see. You get a page that is a subscription, more of a traditional subscription page. So here we go here, which uh, um, asks me for, oh, that's not actually it at all. Oh, I know what it is. I had to click one more time. So here's my subscribe to Nylon. So I go to the Nylon website. And now I have, have to sort of notice this other little Nylon link. Okay, I'm still on board. I want to give them, you know, my 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 uh, my information. And now that's I've got to fill out link. a bunch of stuff, right? That's so funny this about is that link because it seems like that's part of what Apple's trying to say, which is people shouldn't have to look around for a link. Anyway, just keep going. But no, I can I mean, see why you make that's a, Apple's thing, you know? Yeah, you make a really good point. I mean, like I said, I did this already and I had kind of forgotten what my navigation uh, issues were. So, and then you've you've got a variety of credit card, blah, 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 blah. So this is, this is certainly an option, but I mean, come on, you've got an Apple ID, you're in Apple already so let's go back to the app so here's my here's my uh i i ipad option and when it loads again sorry it's so slow you guys now i just click on the 9.99 and at that point it's all app store um confirmed subscription yes that sounds really good and then i um i enter my id and you know how it goes after that so that's that's the in-app experience which Hey, it, Apple is getting money out of this, but do we, you know, I, I mean, how much are we champions for publishers who have had it their way for a really long time? Quite frankly, I don't need to be marketed to by the folks at Nylon. I, yeah, I, I don't want yeah. anything sent to my home. I, I don't, I don't get anything out of that. And I know that they do, but I don't work for them. It's the, the, I mean, you got to remember also the big complainers in this are big established publishing right. companies. And, and when I say established, I even mean things like the, the Amazon Kindle and, and other things that are affected by this. Those are the guys that are going to complain because they're the one with the established models and they're going to have to kind of figure this out. Where this is a boon is to the same kinds of publishers and the same size of publishers that kind of equate to the same size and kind of developers who are making small apps with a two-man team and no budget. They now have a distribution model that is well worth the thirty percent. It's like not a problem. Here's here, take that money because we would have no other way to do this, and we'll like you know we'll explode on the scene with something like Doodle Jump and blow everyone's mind and make a ton of money. Even though we gave thirty percent of that to Apple, that made it possible. There are going to be smaller tiered publishers or even self publishing that can somebody can put out an iPad app and make it simple enough for you to get it and you get it through your iP or your uh, your uh, iTunes uh, you know username and password and bam you're done that publisher is going to be happy to hand that 30% over to Apple because there is a huge layer of infrastructure they don't have to worry about it anymore yeah it's definitely it's 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 easy to say ah big corporations they're just whining because they've got to figure out a new pricing structure but you know, there's also, I mean, Sony, for example. I mean, Sony's launching its whole e-music store and you think, oh, Sony, they've got it all figured out or or they don't make as much money this year. Do we really care? But but this also, I mean, it affects everybody in different ways. RDO is a, is a music subscription service, which is priced very competitively to the, the new Sony store. And they've got a bunch of partners. And I mean, I know a handful of people who work at RDO. It's a startup. And this could, I don't know if this is going to cripple them. But it's certainly something that could really set um, good companies back if they either have to charge us more or not make their margins and fold. Uh, so, yeah. so you know, it's 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 there. There are a lot of different ways you can look at this. Now, I know that you um, you had uh, suggested a couple apps to me that were like, hey, that you know, this this whole subscription model may not work for everybody, but it can also affect um, one-off purchases as well. Yeah, the, um, a good example of that is, for example, I use uh, Comixology, which a lot of people are familiar with. Tom uh, Merritt's a huge fan of this as well. And this is kind of yeah. how I consume comics now. I rarely go uh, to comic book stores anymore, other than I enjoy that experience. I like the ambiance of a good comic book store and the sort of thing that that entails. But but I mostly consume comics now digitally. Um, and they're, and more and more of them are showing up. And Comixology, the way it works right now, is a in uh in-app purchase per mm -hmm. issue. If they introduce, and there's there's talk that we'll see a lot of this coming soon from a lot of different app uh, developers, if they introduce a subscription model to comics, uh, that could be a fairly big deal for me as a reader, and I would jump on that big time. 
uh, especially for certain series I'm interested in. I'm hoping it's kind of a, a per series thing or perhaps a per publisher thing. Um, but the, the, you know, they're going to have to be beholden to these same standards. What's possible in Comixology's case, and we've talked a lot with those guys. We used to, we've had them on a couple of shows on Twitter with, with Tom and I, uh, kind of asking how their model works and what their plans are. They're small enough that they probably haven't invested the hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of dollars that a big publisher has in their subscription model, in processing, in employees and people to kind of help manage all that. And so for them, they'll probably embrace this. They'll probably say, mm -hmm. well, okay, yeah, it's 30%. But this gives us a chance to not worry about all that. Apple is, an, is responsible for that, and they're beholden to sort of make sure people's orders are going through and the stuff is getting downloaded to their iPad and that they're therefore able to read it. Um, and they don't have to think about that. And in a way, if you're a smaller startup like that, I feel like that's maybe a good way to get going. The problem is along comes some other competing tablet, and if it gets steam and does well, mm -hmm. then, then what? Are they, is there a new separate model for that? That's where, to me, this kind of gets complicated. If this world was nothing but iPads for the rest of time, I mean, you and I would probably be happy, but right. chances are that's not going to be the case. And these guys want to be on as many platforms as they can to serve as many customers as they can. And that gets weird. I well, think. I mean, especially after uh, Mobile World Congress, the, I mean, it's like, it's tablet nuts out there. It's certainly yeah. not just going to be the iPad. That's for sure. Whether they're all going to be as successful as the iPad was in its initial year remains to be seen, but... But yeah, I'm with you. It's it's um it's it's a it's a real problem if you if you uh, make a point out of taking yourself out of an ecosystem that's doing well. What is it? What is Adobe Ideas? Because I uh, I looked at Adobe Ideas before we started the show today, and I'm not familiar yeah. with it. I, even though I've I've played around with a lot of other Adobe products on the iPad. Well, Adobe Ideas is maybe my favorite thing they do on the iPad and on the iPhone. It's uh, um, essentially it's a vector based drawing program, but it's it's designed for really quick sketches. Like mm -hmm. if you just got to get an uh, literally an idea out of your head and get it on paper or in this case on the iPad and save that and export it if you want to have it. It's actually it's actually usable in a full blown version of Illustrator and it's all done, you know, in vector graphics. So that's stuff scalable. Um, it lets you change color. It lets you uh, do a whole bunch of stuff. But what their model is, is they offer this free app. This is an unusual for apps. So they have a, a free app and then they offer features on top of it, which they just added recently, that allow you to improve the experience. So, for example, mm -hmm. you can buy layers, which lets you do, I think it's up to six. I'm not sure about this. Six layers. Which is huge. Uh, which is a pretty big deal, right? And it's like, I think, $4.99 or something. Uh huh. Um, again, it's an in-app purchase. Nothing new. We've been doing this for a long time since, you know, Apple made that possible. What, what I thought this would be an interesting, uh, at least, angle on this would be, there's some talk from a friend of mine who works for Adobe, and I won't say his name because I won't get him in trouble, mm -hmm. but there's talk that they're considering a subscription model for some of their apps, this one included, and perhaps some others they'd release, uh, their Photoshop app that's out now, this might also be affected as well, which is a pretty good app. Um, and the idea is that you would subscribe to these features. So instead of, well, I don't want to pay, you know, $5 for this feature and get it permanently, I would rather pay uh, a monthly recurring 99 cents to get all the features. And then when I'm done with those, I just cancel that, that subscription. This affects them and their ability to recoup that 30% they're going to lose to Apple now. Um, and it, it probably affects their desire to even want to do that. My guess is they don't go that way at all, and they revert back to just let them let them buy individual features. And I feel like just it's a good case study for a lot of apps within app purchases that may have had a, a product or something within their app that could fit a subscription model. I think you're going to see a lot of those guys, not all, but a lot of them pull back to a piecemeal kind of purchase feature thing or purchase content thing like a lot of them are doing now. Yeah, I mean, um, the so pay-as-you-play model, that. it really, it makes sense in a situation mm -hmm. like this. I mean, it's, you know, you, it's pay-as-you-go. Uh, pay for what you want. So, I mean, that's that's another that's another big good point that you make, Scott, is that subscription models, uh, again, if you're the person who picks up a wire once in a while when you are in the mood at the grocery store, I mean, you're not even using a subscription model now anyway, so none of this really makes sense to you. You'd, you'd prefer to just pay the $10 or whatever the newsstand fee is well, twice a year or something like that. This is, yeah, this there's is a threshold. There's always a, there's a threshold. And at some point you either hit that threshold 
So if, if you're just don't care that much about magazines, but you saw a cover and it had, I don't know, Bill Gates on the front talking about malaria and you think, oh, that's something I'm interested in. I want to see what's going on with that. You pay your seven bucks. You read that magazine. You're done with it. You may keep it. You may not. But you're not going to be you're not the target. Right. For a subscription model. And wherever that threshold is with comics, I'm at that threshold. I would I would consume a lot more if I, you know, did it that way. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Video games are kind of in the same boat. Um, you know, games like World of Warcraft, they charge a monthly fee. Other games that have tried to compete with them. And this is also true in the on the iPad as well. They've gone to a more of a, um, a microtransaction model like, say, we uh, we rule or we city. Mm -hmm. where you pay pieces and bits. And, and, and there's a lot of talk that that's a more profitable model at the numbers they're generating. So it's all just, it's an issue of threshold. And I don't know where that is for, for all these developers, but there's no question that this is making them all stand back a little bit and go, hmm, where is our threshold? And why would we want to do that now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so those are a few of our apps that we've thought, hmm, things might change for these apps, or maybe these apps will get better, or maybe they'll rethink the, their strategy. And, you know, hopefully the consumers are the ones that, that don't get screwed in the end. I think really monetarily, we may in some cases, but hopefully it, it won't be uh, because, um, because Netflix pulls out of the app store or something awful like that, because that would really ruin my next plane ride. For all the links to the apps that we just mentioned, you can, of course, visit iPad Today online. If you don't know the URL, you're missing out, buddies. It's twit.tv slash IPT, and that's where you can watch all of our past episodes, read our show notes, subscribe to the show. You can do it through iTunes. You can, you can watch our download links straight from the page, whatever you want. We don't care as long as you enjoy it. We're on uh, YouTube as well. So if you want to visit our Twit YouTube page, uh, go ahead, watch our show however you like. Quick reminder, if you're not watching the show live, that we do record iPad Today on Thursdays, 1.30 p.m. Pacific, uh, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. I always have to think about that, even though I know exactly what time. Scott, you're ahead one hour, correct? So you're <laughs> yes. mountain time? I'm mountain time, so I'm one hour ahead of you. So when it's, when it's it, right now it's two o'clock for you, it's three for me. So 2.30 p.m. mountain time, that's when <laughs> on Thursdays for all you mountaineers... And then 3.30 Central, yeah. and, and you've, you've at least got the states covered. And GMT, I, I'm not even going to go into that because that'll take a while. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching the show. And if you're not watching live, check us out. It's fun. You can be in the chat room. And we mess up sometimes, and I cut that out of the show later. So it's like the, it's like the, um, the uncensored uh, PG side boob version of iPad Yeah, as I was going to say, more side boob in the <laughs> unedited version. So be here live for sure for that. Uh, before we uh, talk about a, a few kind of non-subscriber, publisher, war type of uh, iPad news items, just want to take a quick moment to thank Slingbox because they're our sponsor on the show today. If you don't have a Slingbox, I assure you that you're missing out because it is the way to watch TV with you anywhere. Anywhere you go, you can watch TV with you and you say, well, wait a second, I... I have Hulu or, or I, I can download TV shows and I can take those with me. No, no, no. It's your like living room television. It's your home system. Anything that's on your DVR, anything that you watch in, in the specific way that you watch it, that is what you take with you. It's actually a, it's a, it's a sling box that you can pick up at Best Buy and now Amazon. You can get a sling box through Amazon too. So if you're not a huge Best Buy person, but you're a big Amazon customer, then this might be the right time for you. And you hook it up to your, your TV or your DVR, and then you, 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 you go off and do your business that, can, that you, can, um, you can access sling box on any smartphone, iPod Touch, uh, your iPad now, sling box iPad app came out couple months ago now. And Leo's always threatening that he's going to take his iPad to the Giants game once, once baseball season starts up and watch all the um, instant replays because it'll, he'll, have, he'll be recording the show at home and you have the option to be able to scrub back just like a DVR. I mean, it's, it's the TiVo capabilities that we can't live with uh, without at home that you can actually take with you. Slingbox is really cool. If you've never used it before, it's, it's downright magical really because... It seems like this wouldn't be possible, but it is. So not just a baseball game. If you've got to go, you know, I've got to go to Florida on a red eye tonight. Eh, I could watch anything that I'd like to watch at home. Um, well, yeah, actually, because I'll have connectivity because I'm flying. Uh, you mean Virgin. you don't have to watch this crappy airline movies. You can watch whatever you have on your DVR. That's what I'm home. saying, Scott. It's pretty cool. So uh, if you want to learn more about Slingbox, 
I guarantee you they're great. Uh, they sponsor all of our breaking news. We love them. Uh, can't say enough good stuff about them. You can learn more at slingbox.com. That's it. And then they'll give you all sorts of options and let you know um, how Slingbox will help you. They got videos and tutorials and all sorts of good stuff. Uh, so thanks, Slingbox. We love you. That's slingbox.com. Turns out, Scott, that um, Apple is the top mobile PC vendor of all yeah, the PC vendors. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, this doesn't so this doesn't really surprise me though because they're not. I mean, uh, can, are phones included in, the, in those numbers? Are we just talking iPads? iPads. And well, that's the I mean, thing is that people go, well, the iPad shouldn't be counted as a PC. Well, that's what's being counted as a PC, and that's what's obviously catapulted Apple to the top because the iPad is to me. I totally consider it a PC. It's a mobile PC. Uh, it, it doesn't yeah, work it the is. same as a Windows netbook would, but that's what I consider it. I don't know. What 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 side of the camp do you fall on? Well, I mean, it's a hard call. I have a, I mean, I've got a MacBook Air 11-inch Air that I love, um, that I do a lot of things on, but I use my iPad the most for most of the kind of work I do. And I'll, like, occasionally I'll be in a client meeting where I'm showing off some illustration work or something. And this thing is perfect for that. In fact, I use Adobe Ideas for it. Mm -hmm. I'll import, like, a, you know, an image of something, like a photograph of something we need to change, and I'll circle it and save it and PDF it off to everybody all while I'm sitting there. I can I can't even do that kind of sort of convenient work and quick work with a stylus and stuff on a notebook. So in a in a very real way, it's become more productive for me than a notebook. But it, I, I mean, then I guess if you're going to call, I kind of am on the side. If you're going to call an iPad a mobile computer, mm -hmm. you kind of have to call an iPod Touch or an iPhone a mobile computer, and then you got to call Android phones a mobile computer. I mean, I don't know where that ends because the the functionality and power and abilities. Are you know some things are limited by size, but essentially they're kind of the same. Yeah, you so know, I, I understand a, that. Part that's a really good point. Why is an Android included in this? I mean, it's it's it, I guess honeycomb tablets will have to be, and that that doesn't didn't really apply to 2010 or when all this data was generated. But uh, but yeah, I mean, my iPad. There are certain apps. The Wired app is a good example of one that's iPad only. World of Goo. I love World of Goo. iPad only. But for the most part, it's just a screen real estate issue for the iPhone. But it's not as if I can't do most of these things on the iPhone as well. Yeah. Smaller capacity. I, I'm a little surprised by the HP numbers. I knew HP still had a fairly sizable, you know, market share in mobile computing and the notebooks and netbooks. But I didn't realize they were in second place like that. I wouldn't have put them that high. And I guess, I mean, now that I think about it, I walk into a Costco and I see a bunch of cheap notebooks. They're generally HP, mm -hmm. um, so they're, they've got their hand in a lot of good retail sort of outlets and stuff. So I guess it makes sense, but that surprised me a little bit. And I wonder if any of this counts, it, anything that HP is doing with mobile platforms outside of notebooks and netbooks. I mean, I don't know. Apple's kind of ruled the 2010 tablet market. Moving forward, I, I, I'm anxious to see what these numbers do and who shuffles where. Like, where will Toshiba be on that list? I don't know. Probably nowhere near number five is my guess. Right. After all these honeycomb tablets hit. But see, it'll be interesting to see if Apple can hang on to that number one spot. I, yeah, I, 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 I think that the iPad will continue to be the, the, the top seller as far as tablet market, at least for the next couple. I, I, I mean, that's my prediction. I, I, I really do feel that way, um, especially because the well, iPad it's, 2 if it's isn't market even available share, yet. If it's market share and, the, and, the, and, and MacBooks continue to, to be strong, absolutely. And mm -hmm. I don't see any reason why that should slow. They've, they've shown, I think, in a very serious way that Apple's dead serious about uh, the notebook market as well. And if anything, they've, they've brought these two cousins closer together by, you know, the, the air is, you know, solid state drives and a battery life akin to, a, to, a, to an iPad. And they're starting to remove things that you don't necessarily need anymore for mobile computing. And there's no, you know, network port on it anymore. It's all Wi-Fi. So as those worlds come closer together and we have less spinning fans and more solid state hardware, uh, I think Apple is poised to to hold that spot for a good long time. Who knows how long, but at least the next probably a good year, two years before we see something, you know, that threatens that top spot. Yeah, I would, I would, I would say two years for sure as well. And then I, I, I hesitate to say anything beyond two years because in two years, the iPad could be some sort of dinosaur and we'd all laugh about, remember when we all use the iPad, it, things move, move quickly these days. Uh, another, um, another top spot Apple's holding is the global touch panel capacity. 
Apple has、mm. secured 60% of it and has caused a real supply shortage for everybody else. Who'd have thunk it? Actually, this is a bit like,、uh, isn't、did. this a bit like,、uh, like, like flash memory a couple of years ago when the iPod,、mm -hmm. run, you know, the iPod was everything. It's still, I mean, iPod touches and, and iPhones use flash memory, but、mm -hmm. I remember when that was really taken off and you had kind of this growth curve that was like that. You couldn't get flash memory anywhere. This feels like the same thing. And I just, people would just hate this. Like other manufacturers and second tier, third tier、uh, distributors are just like, dang it, we cannot get our hands on it. And therefore, what little you can get your hand on is super expensive. So I think we'll see that for a little bit here. But, you know, having, having so much happening on the Android platforms and stuff, that has to create, you know, a bit of a price war here. Cause, because for a while there, it's just Apple because, you know, they've got the first viable consumer grade touchscreen on the right. market. Right. Nobody even wants the parts yet. No one else. Right. No one even cares. And now it's like, well, we all need it. This is the thing. We all have to do it. And at some point, do we run out of, I don't know, whatever we use to make them, <laughs> whatever natural resource we have left? Well, I think what happens is that、uh, the, you know, anyone who's considered an up and comer、uh, or, you know, second tier. Uh, or, you know, is trying to compete in this space, just can't. Because, I mean, you can't, you can't not have the technology that the big guys have. You know, if RIM's using it and Apple's using it and HP's got some of the components, it's like if you can't play on that level, then you just can't play at all. So that's unfortunate for anybody who's innovative enough to, to you know, have great ideas and want to make a good product. It just consolidates all of the talent into a, a few different companies instead of many. Drock Dow or Drock, let's see, Drock W in the chat room said、uh, Apple buys up an entire market and drives down the price for everyone in the long run. It makes a good point. In the long tail of this,、um, you do end up with cheaper prices. Flash memory's never been cheaper, although I, it fluctuates, but、um, you, know, you, you can buy an SD card for pennies compared to what you used to have to pay for it. And so that kind of demand, even from one distributor or manufacturer, does drive down prices in the long run. I'm thinking more in the next, you know, next six months to a year what that does to the price of raw materials needed to make products like this.、Mm -hmm. Eventually you catch up, eventually it's okay. Assuming it's not, you know, it's a fairly renewable resource and Apple's been pretty good about that. Right.、Um, we, should be, we should be okay in the long haul. Prices will go down. Thanks, chat room. Sometimes you guys have great words of wisdom, most of the time. Not 100% of the time, 60%. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding.、Uh, iPad stars of the week. There's just one this week. Cat haters, look away. Go get yourself a glass of water and shake it off because our,、uh, our iPad star of the week, his name is Spartacus, AKA Sparty.、Um, he belongs to a nice man named John. I don't know where he lives, but he's、um, a big fan of gaming in the tub, as you can see by this picture that John sent in. Looks like Spartacus <laughs> is a fan of Arriving HD, which, by the way, is on sale.、Uh, anyone who watches the show knows that I love that game.、Um, so I don't know. They, they want to make it more worth your while. But、uh, Cats in Cats in Sinks. I think there's like a Tumblr account about this exact thing or some sort of there, other website. There should be. Yeah, there should if, be. My if, cat if, is actually,、uh, my cat, I think, is in a sink right now. And、really? I'm not kidding about that. Yeah, well, yeah. maybe your cat and, and Sparty could、uh, go bowling later. Sure. He, he, looks like、a good, he looks like a good time. So thanks, John <laughs> Spartacus. Great name. And, you know, he's orange, so I have to feature him.、Uh, but cats aren't the only people who like iPad today. Of course, humans do too, and dogs and birds and. Somebody sent me a fake alligator、uh, a while back, which I didn't feature because it was like a stuffed animal. I don't know. It's, it could be anything. Oh, it was like a, it was actually taxidermied dead alligator. It wasn't, though. You could tell.、Oh. Well, because a while ago I had said, well, what would be, you know, it's not just cats and dogs I want to feature, but that seems to be all anybody ever sends me. Send me an alligator and I'll be really impressed. But then you just open a can of worms because everybody seems to have stuffed. Animal alligators, stuffed animals.、Uh, we got an email from another John. This is John with an H.、Uh, in episode 31, you mentioned that you get comments from users about the app's price being different. Yes. And in fact, Arriving HD is a good example. App prices, we, we will tell you what they are at the time that we record the show, but they fluctuate depending on it's, you know, anything that the company or developers want to charge. So they change all the time. John wants us to know about a website he uses to track. Apps and their fluctuating prices. It's called appshopper.com. He says it tracks the price changes of any app in the App Store so you can see the cheapest price it's ever been in the past. So you know if, like, hey, it's $4.99, but it was $1.99 a couple months ago. I don't know. Maybe I'll wait for it to be $1.99 again. 
Or uh, he says the best feature is tracking apps that are paid but changed to free. For example, I visited App Shopper earlier today. Just so happens that World of Goo, which is something that we featured on the show in the past, which is a great game, it's really fun on the mm. iPad, is free for 24 hours. This being within the 24 hour window. Usually it's, yep. oh, I think. Nine, uh, four ninety nine is it normally? I yeah. thought it was even more. I thought it was more I, like I might $10 have been. They may margin. Have at four ninety nine. At least yeah. initially. And by the, way, by the way, you're absolutely right. That that version of the game, definitive version of World of Goo. It's been around for a couple of years on the yeah. Wii and on PCs. Yeah. But man, it's like it was born to be on my iPad. It's amazing. Totally agree. It is It is my preferred. It, it's, really, it's a really fun game. There are certain levels that I have not gotten past. <laughs> and so I've, I've had to take a little bit of a timeout from World of Goo just for my own sanity. But... Hey, it's free right now. This would be the time to get it. Um, and that applies to a lot of other apps. There's almost no way it's like, you know, an eBay auction, but but yep. so many of them. It's, it would be very hard to keep on top of it. So appshopper.com, really good resource. Thanks, John. I had never heard of it before, so. I would uh, argue that I could not. We've been using appshopper.com for stuff for App Slappy for a good year or more. Oh, yeah? And I don't think we could do the show without it. It is such a valuable resource. And it should be mentioned they now have an iPhone and iPad app uh, version of App Shopper that ties right into their database, gives you push notifications. You can watch apps, all that kind of stuff. And there's other apps that do this as well, but I don't think any of them do it as well as App Shopper. And we sound like we're shilling for them, but man, it is awesome. They are nailing it. And it's it's something I, I don't know that our show would would be as good without it. It's it's honestly a great resource. Well, really there you have it. Um, By the way, the chat room is pointing out that I'm a big dummy. I haven't even had any of this margarita, by the way. I'm just slow <laughs> on Thursdays, kind of a slow Thursday. 99 cents, 99 cents for 24 hours. To me, I was like, wow, that's as if it was free because I do believe I paid 9.99 when when it initially came out. So thank you for keeping me honest. 99 cents. It's a dollar. It's not free but it's a lot cheaper than it ever has been before. So there you go. Um, Steve Dickey, who is a teacher at Divine Child High School in Dearborn, Michigan, uh, had, we had taught, we've talked in the past, we try to feature as many cases and stands as we can. A lot of them are similar. Leo and I are always, you know, particularly laughing about the ones that you sort of slip on a hand, you can spin them around. We saw some of these at Macworld and we were like, why would you really want to do that? <laughs> Steve has has a good reason, and he sent us a video to tell us exactly why. All right, so Sarah and Leo, you asked why anybody might want to have one of these hand strap things attached to their to their hand while they're walking around with the iPad. I'm a teacher, so I like to have a very secure hold on my iPad while I walk around so that no student knocks it out by accident. This is a Belkin 360. It comes with a couple of attachments. One is this, this handy disc that covers the back of the case. When you get that, the first thing you do is take it off and get rid of it, because mm -hmm. you'll never get it off again if you put it back on. So this has this, and this stand attachment. I typically use the hand strap when I walk around the room. Now, what's one of the ways I use it? I've got this cool program called AirSketch. You can see it up on the screen, and I can write on my iPad and have it appear wirelessly on my projector. So I can say, for example, Ooh. I'm gonna zoom in on this picture. Oh, that's awesome. And draw my free body diagram right on the picture while I'm walking around the room. Now, how does it do that? Chrome running on a laptop plugged into the projector. This creates a website, sends it wirelessly through the Wi-Fi to the laptop, and the laptop then puts it on the screen. Pretty awesome. About seven bucks, eight bucks maybe. Anyway, AirSketch, awesome app as a teacher. I love him. That you he's can great. you can tell that he's the fun teacher that everybody hopes they're going to get into his class. Mm -hmm. You know, ponytail. Got oh, the and, and he's going. and he's excited, and he's he's resourceful, and he's got an iPad on his hand, and he's. <laughs> vector diagramming it's it's it it's it reminds me of those teachers that you know you weren't actually sleeping in the back when the projector went on and it's like oh my gosh algebra equations it's like this is a really it's a really cool real world um reason that the on the hand and and having it be able to swivel back and forth is a perfect example. So thank you, Steve. You not only seem like a cool teacher, but you gave us a couple tips. The Belkin 360, uh case, I guess you would call it, or stand or a handstand. And then mm. air sketch, which uh, we have not tried out on the show in the past, but I love the way it works, where it's actually talking uh, to itself uh, through through uh, through uh, browser. So thanks to John and Steve and Spartacus the cat 
You are all uh, wonderful viewers, and we appreciate uh, or or audio listeners. Some of you don't watch don't watch the show, but you listen, and then maybe you go and watch later, and that's fine too. We don't we're not going to judge. I'm just saying we don't you don't discriminate against no. them, however they want to consume this stuff. Let it be that absolutely not. Yeah, if you didn't see Spartacus the Cat just now, you just just believe me when I say he's really cute. So um, a reminder that we do want to hear from you. We love featuring your videos, obviously, and your voicemails and your emails and your tips and your tricks. Uh, write us at iPad today at twit.tv. Leave us a voicemail. The number is 757-504-IPAD. That's 4723. Or for extra points, send us a video because we love seeing you. And, you know, like Steve showed, it, you really learn a lot. So um, send us a video if you want. If you do send us a video, try to upload it to YouTube like Steve did or Vimeo or, or you know, really any video hosting service of your choice and send us the link because we don't want to download attachments. And if you can remember to put video in the subject line when you email us the link, that really helps me filter because um, I have a feeling that I miss some of your videos sometimes because we just get a high volume of email. So thank you to everybody for your participation. We couldn't do the show without you. Scott, I told mm. you before the show that you would be required to wear a hat for our App Cap Awards. Are you going to comply? I was gonna, here's the deal. I was going to wear a cowboy hat, a yeah. leather one that my wife bought me while she was uh, visiting some people down the south end of the state where you can get a lot of cowboy hats. And uh, I realized it doesn't work with headphones. Like, I can't get it over the headphones or the headphones around it. So instead, um, should I show you now? Is it okay to show you now? Oh, please do. All right. I brought my Intel Inside Skull Cap. That I can wear over my headphones. Oh, I love this. And you know, Scott, so, uh, because I want to make sure that the cowboys are represented, I'll just wear my <laughs> cowboy hat so that you're, you know, you're in the snow and I'm, you know, at the rodeo. So it works out this really totally well. This totally fits, yeah. I look like a skater kid, but I, I think that's yeah. okay. Well, you're a skater boy, B-O-I. I that's think. right. That's how. Skater with an eight in it. Skater. <laughs> yeah, eight, yeah, yeah. So... Anyway, AppCap Awards. We wear hats. What, what can I say? That's just the way it goes. Um, my <laughs> AppCap will start with me, and then, Scott, you can talk about yours. This um, I discovered on John Gruber's website, which is daringfireball.net. If you're not familiar with John, he is he's one of these guys that just uncovers cool things on the Internet and has a lot of, of very insightful things to say. He is an Apple fanboy, or you could or he's certainly been accused of that before. But he's one of my favorite online resources. He's in my RSS reader, and I read him every day. He is the one that I can thank for introducing me to something called Pennant. Now, you say, Pennant, mm, sounds like baseball. And you'd be right. I'm a baseball fan, okay? So now I am I love football. I'm really, you know, Super Bowl was fun and everything. I'm tired of that. I don't watch a lot of basketball, and I'm ready for baseball to start again. And that's why Pennant is my new favorite app, it actually just crashed in full disclosure, but let's let's launch it again. Make sure that, <laughs> that it works a second time. Oh my gosh, seriously. Okay, okay, here it goes. It, it has sort of like a weird black screen for a second before, before we launch it. Now, I am from the San Francisco Bay Area, so I happen to be a Giants fan. So we'll just go ahead and, you know, I'm going to pick my team. By the way, I can look at it a variety of different ways. This is sort of a cover flow look. I can look at it this way, or I can also look on a map. Hey, here's my team, Giants. All right. So oh, cool. Giants and A's are in this area. So let's say, okay, I want to know more about Giants. What's it going to tell me? So this is everything that's ever happened in any Giants game since they've been the Giants. I'm not even kidding you. What I can do here, this is so visual and awesome, is scroll through all of the years. So let's just go to 2010 because anybody who lived under a rock didn't realize that my Giants won the World Series, best day of my life. Okay, so let's go into the 2010 year. And by the way, it says, yeah, it won their division, they won the pennant, and they won the World Series. So you know that just kind of by looking at it at a snapshot. But let's go into 2010. And what it will do at this point is load up the season. And okay, so this was... Let's, uh, we're about in the middle of the season. So like their first game was against Houston Astros, right? And they, wow, they beat the Pirates really good on April 14th. And they lost the Phillies on the 28th and so on and so forth. And of course, if I scroll down to the very end, you can see it's all, it all makes sense. You know, the last game they played, they, they beat the Rangers and that there's our little World Series flag again. Now, if, uh, and I can look at this in a variety of different ways and see, you know, what their standings were and this and that. So let's go, uh, go ahead and say, okay, well, I'm, I'm interested in actually viewing this game. I, I missed the World Series and so I didn't see 
how the game actually ended. Okay, so now this is the game itself. And so again, this is really visual and it's all based on, you know, touch. So if I'm just pulling around, this is, I'm looking at my innings, right? So like in the bottom of the fifth, David Murphy struck out, okay? And there's no score and so on and so forth. Now I can look at it a variety of different ways too. So if I click on this little person icon, then it's actually telling me at this point in the game, exactly, you know, like who's batting for the Rangers, who was pitching, uh, because of course, you know, the pitches change a little bit depending on uh, what part of the game that you're looking at. And then you could also look at um, this in a sort of a more kind of infographic -y, linear sort of a way. So Andre Torres struck out at this point. And if I, oh, I have to do it this way. Um, and so you get the idea. I mean, this is like, this is like. <laughs> That's so cool. I know. This is like crazy baseball stat person's wet dream. Pardon yeah. my French, but that's exactly yeah. what it is. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I, what I think I like about it is what I like. Well, I'm a sucker for data visualization of any kind. And this is, I mean, baseball stats can be, even if you're a fan, can be kind of boring mm -hmm. in the way that they're traditionally given to us. This is a really fun, totally visual way to, to dig through that data. And that is good in my book. Fan or not, that's awesome. Me too. Yeah. I, I, I love... The way that this app looks is really cool. I mean, even if you're not interested in baseball at all, I mean, let's say that you you went to a game and, oh, okay, so like you went to a game and your boyfriend proposed to you on the Jumbotron and that game all of a sudden became really special in your life. It's like you can go through and find that game and, and just kind of remember certain details about it and like, oh yeah, there was that home run and everyone freaked out and that foul ball, we almost caught it or, you know, sort of that sort of thing. So I, I think baseball stats can be really overwhelming and some people take them really seriously. I don't actually, I just like baseball and I like to go through and kind of remind myself like, you know, are the, are the Brewers good? I don't remember if the Brewers were good four years ago or not. You know, there's certain teams that just aren't even on my radar. And this is like such a cool, just, it, it just gives you so many ways to get your information. And again, that kind of infographic -y thing is very hot right now. And Pennant has done a really good job. It's not free. It's five bucks. Um, it's pennant.cc is the website. And they've got like a really nice video tutorial at that website that kind of goes through Pennant. If you're not convinced by my tutorial, then they've got a nice one as well. And it, it's set to um, to death cab music or something like that. So, you know, it's, it's very, you know, it's <laughs> all, all, it's, it's all so all. hipster and appropriate. But again, four ninety nine <laughs> for Pennant. That's my app cop. Scott, what do you got? All right. Well, while I have my Intel Inside hat on, and by the way, I would love to see that app, uh, some repurposing for the NFL. I'd like totally. to see the NBA on there. Oh, yeah. I'd follow more hockey on there. I would love that. Anyway, uh, my my app's going to be a quick go through. And anyone who knows me and a few people watching and listening are familiar with some of what I do. I'm a huge video game nerd. Um, I have been my whole life. And, I'm, and one of my favorite things about the iPad is the constant flow of new ways to play games. Um, I'm not a huge fan of traditional games on the iPad, uh, meaning, you know, where they try to fake a lot of joysticks and stuff. I like new ways of playing things. Uh -huh. But I'm also kind of a big fan of the the retro vibe we're getting a lot of uh, with a lot of different games. On my radar, pop, uh, radar popped up a few days ago uh, a game called Super Soviet Missile Master. And Master <laughs> spelled M-A-S-T-A-R. Uh, it's made by Behemoth or The Behemoth is the name of the uh, developer. You can see it here and I know you've got it there. Um if it if you're getting a a uh, Atari twenty six hundred vibe from what I just showed you, yeah, you're not alone. Um, it it is basically done in the style of very mid seventies video game technology uh, and visuals, very blocky, very pixelated stuff. The sound effects are very Atari twenty six hundred. I hold mean, it, hold it up to the screen when, because my uh, my app is uh, it is stuck on like half of a launch. Yeah, so it's very, it's that 8-bit kind of a look or 4-bit. Very, maybe even 4-bit, yeah. <laughs> this is, I mean, we're talking, Sarah Lane was probably maybe in diapers still when this was going on. Awesome, right here. cool visual. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, when you launch the game, it's very simple. What I, what I like about it is the controls are very simple. You basically move this ship up and down, trying to avoid airplanes and bombers and, and destroy the United States. And then the big Russian dude tells you at the end, you get a good job. <laughs> You do it again and again. It's super simple. It's farther away this time. Uh, so there's more stuff to avoid. There are birds and helicopters now. Uh, they can kill you, so you got to be careful of those and dodge them. It's all very simple drag and push. And there we go. California is destroyed once again. 
Um, and I, you I like I like how he just farther. he kind of just like throws his <laughs> arms around rather than like congratulating you or anything yeah. that would be seen as weak. Yeah, because, you know, if he could, he'd say, well done, comrade. But since they're trying to stick with the period, there are no sound effects uh, that are voice modulated or anything. Um, but it gets harder and harder. There are more and more obstacles, stuff oh. that moves in a weird way. And I just, did I just die? Yep, I did. And he's upset. Um, well, the other thing I like about it, just a, just a, it's a tiny little thing. I mean, anybody can get away with a retro looking game and kind of make it silly and goofy and whatever. What I like about this game is the entire time it's flickering like an old propaganda film. It is. And so you feel like you are playing Cold War made in some Russian bunker 1981 <laughs> kind of thing. The, 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 the subtle nod to that kind of aesthetic is what makes it for me. It's not even that fun of a game. I put that in quotes. There's nothing about this that's like groundbreaking in that way but they have they basically have basically have in, in maybe a very ironic way but they basically created this this thing that really could have been russian propaganda on your 2600 in 1976 i and, love uh, this love it totally love it it's you really know great. and it's worth noting that you said it's not even really that fun but it's yeah. free it's a yeah, it's free. It's a free game. You know, it's, this is the sort of the these are the sort of things that are so great in the app store that you come across and you're like, this is awesome for like two reasons. But yeah. it's not going to blow your mind. I mean, it's not a world of goo. It's just like a yeah. fun retro thing that that you know reminds you of your childhood, or it's just a good time waster, or you just yeah. like to have the Russian doing that, you know, <laughs> congratulations. In, in, a way, in a way it's, I mean, it's, I know it's kind of meant to be somewhat funny, but right. it's also kind of got, I don't know. There's a sting of history there. There's yeah. a weird kind of, I don't know. The vibe of that is, is hard to, 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 to describe. And I just feel like to be able to do something with that simple of visuals and do it in a way that sort of encapsulate, encapsulates an entire stereotype of a period of time that we have, in the States is no small task and they've totally accomplished it. So I'm big fan. And it's like you said, totally free. Go and get it. It's, it's the hot thing for me right now. I love it. Super Soviet missile mass star. So that's M A S T A R except yep. no substitutes. If you could go back and see if you, if you could go remake red Dawn, which is actually getting remade. It is. Imagine if yes. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm so I excited. I can barely stand it. Um, but imagine Red Dawn if the uh, the the invading communists could drop iPads from planes. This is what they'd want to give you to play, and they would have misspelled master by accident. That's kind of what I like to think about when I play it. It's Go uh, it's the real deal. They they have left no stone unturned. That's for sure. That's right. Super yep. Soviet missile master Scott Johnson. We've come to the end of our show. Thank you so much Aww. for being on the show. This was really fun. I've been having a ball. I'm so glad you had me. And um, any time uh, that you uh, are short on somebody, I'd be happy to come back. I, I I'd hope, be uh, happy to it. have you. More than happy. Remind folks where they can find you online at all your various places if they miss at the beginning of the show. Sure. Um, they can follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash extra life. Uh, he's, he's, where... he's a good tweeter. I can vouch for that. Oh, well, thank you. I try, to, I try to tweet eff uh, effectively. Yeah, no, you're a good way. tweeter. Uh, they can find everything I have going on. That's the comics, that's the shows, all the podcasts, everything that's going on. Uh, there's something for everybody over at frogpants.com. So check that out today. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Scott. And thank you to everybody who watched live or is listening later or, or watching a week from now. If you're in the future, please write me and tell me how it is. I hope it's good. <laughs> I'm Sarah Lane, and we'll see you next week on I've Had Today. Oh! Scott, you're supposed to howl. Oh, oh, oh. oh. sorry.